Hello, welcome to Wayne's World of Mandolin. I'm Wayne Benson. Today we're going to talk about moving around shapes on the fretboard to play in different keys. I have a video about note identification that I think can be a lot of help, but for a lot of folks, this very thought could be kind of the introduction to yourself knowing the fretboard, where the notes are, and what position that we want to play out of to enable ourselves to play in all the different keys. The first one, for whatever reason that we that we tend to discover is G. When we're using this position on the thumbnail for this video, you can see my fingers in this shape. It's actually in a C position on the thumbnail, but for whatever reason, these two notes of the chop chord if we're playing a G with your ring finger at 5 and your pinky on the 7th fret of the G string, that shape, we kind of start playing out of that position for the key of G. to use I Saw the Light or any kind of a familiar melody that we're not going to be really having to worry too much about learning a new tune with this. Let's take something we're familiar with and look at this concept. If you've already played out of this position, which a lot of you probably have, you may not realize this can be the way that we begin to move into. I'll just go to C right now. This is going to go from my index finger playing the G note here at the 5th fret of the D string, now it's going to be on the C note. That's the 3rd fret of the A string. Now watch this. Here comes the shape. Now I'm playing from a C note here and using the same exact, if you wanted to think of it as an inversion, I have a 5 note here under my middle finger. One, two, three, four, five. I'm playing that G note here. The same thing was happening here with a root note of G and the 5 note of D. Even if you're not aware of all of that, just moving your fingers to this shape. Now I'm going to play a, a very close solo. It's not going to be exact, but I'm going to play I Saw the Light in C. No open strings in that solo at all. So that alone should be enough of a demonstration to give you some ambition to learn how to play out of this shape. The dreaded B flat. I've had a lot of students in, in recent years say, why do people want to play in B flat? And it's a, in, in bluegrass, I think the right answer for that is that some stuff is so high in B vocally that you want to do it in B flat. But you get that really cool sound out of the banjo, capoed in B flat. It just gives it even a little bit more edge than if you're capoed in A. So B flat is almost like it's the accepted half step in the world of bluegrass. You're not going to see a lot of stuff that's in C sharp or A flat or keys like that. But B flat comes up a lot. And if you learn this shape, these two fingers... Starting out from that position, I'm going to play this uh, really close break again for I Saw the Light now in B-flat. And notice, I'm going to jump back to where I started earlier, looking at the G chop chord. And these two notes of that chord being the starting place for the idea that I'm talking about today. This B-flat, you could do that here. But we don't have that edgier tone that really is nice. The mandolins can get a little weird. The notes along this part of the G string may not have as much presence or be as um, 
in your face of a sound if you're playing bluegrass. So for B flat, let's don't take this G chord shape and just lean on that thought of using the two notes up here because some people are going to be tempted to do that. Let's let this serve as a way to begin to learn note identification on the fretboard. So this is a B flat note. Look at what we've just today we've talked about this and we're getting familiar with this is G. Here's C. Here's B flat. Because like I say, a lot of times these shapes stick more so than just studying the notes of the fretboard because they're very practical to use. So anyway, here comes the solo in B flat. some double stop licks on the end there and then up to a higher position out of the arpeggio here but still the core of that break was in first position B flat using this same shape so here is what we want to do you could play this obviously if we move from B flat up a half step that's B a lot of you're gonna recognize that sound up to C that we already demonstrated. Now here, these, are, these positions create this opportunity. You might be familiar with playing D in first position. A lot of traditional mandolin played out of that shape in fiddle tunes. We could also play here. Where this isn't necessary to be able to play in D, we could do that in first position, but it creates that option of uh, having a higher octave to get up to these higher notes that, we, that we're going to want to use. So that same train of thought there, I'm getting into a little bit more of just the perks of understanding how these move around. If I was playing E... same exact intro an octave high just watching those shapes move around the last one I want to talk about right now F those two shapes exact same information an octave apart so there a whole step up we're back to G where the whole thing started all right so like most of the videos that I make this isn't something that you just kind of sit down and in you know 30 minutes okay I've got that now what's next this is going to go on and on each one of these shapes isn't going to be just closed notes. You're going to learn to use, here's an example, if I'm playing in C, I can play a hammer on from that E note from the third of the scale up to the five. That's going to work and be powerful and fun to do in the key of C. So I want to do that. If I'm in B flat, not as much to hammer on from that E note up to the F note doesn't really work. So as, as you go through this, you're going to kind of customize the things around each one of these shapes to take advantage of open strings. All of that becomes like an individual study of each different key. This is just an overall idea to help you learn to play Use all of the fretboard to play in the different keys. If you'd like some help, maybe singling out all of those particulars in whichever chord it is that you really need to bone up on. If, you, if someone that you're in jam sessions with sings a lot in B-flat, then you want to put eggs in that basket. But you could reach out to me uh, at Facebook, private message me for some Skype lessons. I hope these videos help. If you like them, then give me a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.